their affiliates. Will Trump reach out to Cruz or Carson for a running mate? Well, I'm not going to take any of those callers right now because I've already asked them. Uh, 855-407-282. In fact, I'll give you a preview of the questions that I would like to ask Donald Trump that I'm not going to get around to him. I'm saving the four questions that I think he will have time to answer for his actual appearance. So I'll start with uh, number five, the one I won't get to, which is, will you eliminate or will you eliminate the 14th Amendment l loophole and eliminate the anchor baby problem in the United States of America? That's birthright citizenship. Will you close the anchor baby lo loophole in the 14th Amendment in order to eliminate the anchor baby problem uh, that we have in America. That's one I don't think I'm going to get to. Would you consider Ted Cruz as your vice president? May not get to it. Will you eliminate funding for sanctuary cities? May not get to it. But that's just a hint of what I may not get to. I'm not going to tell you what I will get to in exactly six minutes when Donald Trump's jet hits the tarmac and he has a chance to take it down that mile and a half runway. It is a big plane. Open the doors, come out and give us the interview on the Savage Nation. Here's one call from Detroit. Angelo, fire away. Go ahead, please. Yes, I was wondering if uh, Donald <clears throat> Trump is going to go after Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama for treason. Another thing is uh, the NSA. Hold, 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 hold it. Well, let's start. How could you go after Hillary for treason? What did she do that's treasonous? Yeah, for, for hoarding uh, classified documents. <clears throat> And uh, which is treasonous, and uh, also well, it's treasonous only if it was sharing the information with a foreign enemy, and it harmed America. Let's be clear. I would say, would you go after Hillary Clinton? What could he, what could he do? I mean, she failed as a Secretary of State. She created the Arab Spring. She celebrated the death of Gaddafi when he warned us what would happen is happening. She also caused the flood of refugees that's sinking Europe. How much more do you need? I Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Welcome to the shadow president of the United States right now, a man who we hope will step out of the shadows come next November when you go into the voting booths and change the course of American history, making America great again. The one, the only, Donald Trump. Donald, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you, Michael. Always an honor. You know, it's not often enough, as I know, you're on the road, you're doing campaign appearances, but my audience is your core. You know that. We've been with you uh, before others jumped in when they saw you might win. I'm going to get right to the, to the main questions that I have for you, Donald, and they're all realistic. And that is this. I know you appeal to Afri African Americans far more so than the polls are saying. Can you tell the audience why you think you appeal to African Americans in particular? Well, you know, I agree with you 100%. The relationship is incredible. And, you know, one of the polls came out and said I had 25%. That says a Republican, which would normally have five or six or maximum seven. And I have 25%. Uh, the poll recently came out showing a 25% uh, with, with African Americans. And one of the announcers said, well, wait a minute. If this is true, that means the election's over. Trump wins automatically. So, <laughs> great well, that, I just want to asking you the, the questions about the audiences that we normally don't think would vote for you. On this show, Donald, last week I said the reason Hispanics are going to vote for you, and I'll say it, I'm not going to ask you, is because, to be honest, and it's very clear, Hispanic, uh, the Hispanic culture is a macho culture. Men don't like reporting to a woman. It's just the way the culture is. And they'd rather have a man than a woman as president. What are your poll numbers amongst Hispanics? Well, we're doing well. The, uh, in Nevada, we just came in and we were at 34 or something like that. Number one, mm. the state of Nevada, which is very heavily Hispanic. Yes. And you know, I have thousands of people that work for me that are Hispanic and tens of thousands over the years that have been Hispanic and from Mexico and different places and they're phenomenal people. And you know, they frankly, you know, they don't want people coming into the country illegally and taking their jobs, <laughs> Michael. So 
with I know. Very well with and the it. same goes for immigrants in general. You are the American dream. They'd rather have you telling them they can still make it here. You know, Donald, I saw a movie last night called Joy about a woman who invented a mop in the 60s. and She was poor and became rich and how, how she had a struggle to become rich in America. No governmental help, no grants, no special things for her. She had to overcome every obstacle. People who stole her design, manufacturers who stole her product. This is the American dream, and I think every immigrant still thinks they can make it. That's why they all come here. Well, I think you're right. And, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of these numbers that I'm getting out. You probably saw Quinnipiac, which is the big Q poll or the Quinnipiac poll, just came out like an hour ago in Iowa that I'm leading now in Iowa. So that means I'm leading every state and every national poll. And some of the states like New Hampshire and South Carolina and Nevada, I'm leading by Georgia, Florida. I'm leading by tremendous margins. So... We're doing well. I mean, we're really doing well, and people want to see something happen. I hate to say change, because Obama used to say they want change, and I hate to use that term because of that. I used to listen to him say change, and, you know, at the time, people thought it was a good thing. It turned out to be a disaster. Right. But, not, but, not, all, not, all, not all changes for the better. Donald, here's the problem. The system is somewhat rigged against an outsider like you. As wealthy as you are, you're not part of the old boys' network inside the Republican uh, headquarters. We all know that, and they've resisted you from day one. What is your strategy if the RNC anoints Cruz and cuts you out at that important juncture? What are you going to do? Care to talk about that? Well, it's a little bit like a prize fighter. I've had held many fights. I know a lot about sports and a lot about prize fighting and all of them. I've had I had 17 Mike Tyson fights more than anybody else, and hmm. you no, know, I sort of get it. And when a fighter goes into a uh, to another fighter's territory, like home territory. He's, and they'll always say, the only way I'm going to win is i got to knock him out. And the way you knock him out is to just win the primaries. If I win the primaries, if I can win in Iowa and win in New Hampshire and win in South Carolina, where I have very big leads, uh, you know, there's nothing anybody can do, frankly. I mean, we'll see. And then you saw the recent poll it just came out, Fox, where I'm beating Hillary very substantially. So, Oh, there's no question in my mind. I've said it on the show. I'd go on record right now. If it was head-to-head -to -head today... Straight out popular election, 75-25 Donald. Hillary is not that popular. She's a product of the government media complex. I, I don't think she's the problem. I think the problem is the Republican Party standing in your way. What would you do on day one to stop ISIS, Donald? We all know that's the biggest national security issue there is. And we all want it stopped because this cancer has been allowed to grow by the Obama uh, administration. Not only has they've allowed it to grow, I think many of the weapons came from America. How would you stop ISIS? Well, for one thing, I'd hit them really, really hard. We're not doing that. I, I don't know if you've heard. You know, I've been saying for years, take the oil, take the oil. I've been saying that for years. Now they just started hitting the oil. Not take, I want to take it. I want to keep it. I want to take it and give some to the vets and the families that have been decimated by the deaths of their children and everything else and the wounded warriors. But we got to we got to take the oil. We're going to stop the banking channels because, you know, they have a lot of money pouring into ISIS from our so-called allies, Michael. You know, the allies. Oh. Oh, sure. You know, you know yes. All, all the great bankers over there in Europe are allies. Uh, Donald, before you go, have you considered a vice presidential candidate uh, uh, running mate? It's really too soon, Michael. You know, I hate to think about it. I have thought about it a little bit, but I hate to think about it until I like to get the deal. I'm a closer. I like to think about getting the deal done. There's plenty of time for that. You'll give me recommendations at the right time. But no, I'll put my name in. I could, I'm not a good manager. <laughs> Donna, let me ask you this, and this is a big one. When you become president, would you eliminate funding for sanctuary cities? I wouldn't have sanctuary cities, no. I think it's you wouldn't. when you look at San Francisco, who ever even heard of sanctuary cities until, frankly, Kate, when Kate was killed and shot in the back by an illegal immigrant, everyone was hearing for the first time about sanctuary cities, this guy with the sanctuary city. No, that sanctuary cities, if, if there's crime, there's crime. You know, they're totally protected with these sanctuary cities. It's like they can do whatever, they, they're almost like diplomats. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> no, sanctuary yeah, they have dip, that, you're, right, you're right, they have diplomatic immunity. Well, it started with Nancy Pelosi. She was one of the greatest boosters of sanctuary city laws because frankly the entire democrat machine lives off the illegal alien vote it, without the illegal alien vote i don't think they'd be where they are today donald that's why i asked that important question and here's one related to the anchor baby situation i'm sorry to the sanctuary city thing which is the so-called anchor baby loophole in the 14th amendment it's a big deal do you think you would have any 
uh, let's say, luck in closing the anchor baby loophole in the 14th Amendment and stop this flood of people who are coming here just to have a baby? Michael, I don't think it's luck. You know, I've been talking about the anchor babies. I'm the one that came up with it. I'm the one that started talking about them. Nobody was even talking. First of all, when I announced illegal immigration on June 16th, when I announced I was running for president, when I announced illegal immigration, it was not a big deal. Nobody was thinking about immigration. Now it's become a very important thing for, you know, safety, security, and even for the economy. But then I started talking about the anchor babies, where people come over to have a baby, and now we have to take care of the baby for the next 90 years. It's ridiculous. So you, they will all say, well, you can't do anything about it if they're born in this land. It's wrong. If somebody comes in and illegally and they have a baby, they are not covered by, by – they don't have to pass a new amendment to take care of that baby. I believe that it will be a vote of Congress. And a lot of the best lawyers, the top lawyers, the real lawyers in the country agree with me. So, And by the way, when I first started that, Michael, nobody agreed with me. Everyone said, oh, no, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to pass a new amendment. It's not right. Well, it's a big issue, and I think that if there's anyone who has started the debate about immigration, it's you. Obviously, suddenly the world is talking about immigration. Look what Hillary Clinton did to Europe. She opened the flood, floodgates through her crazy Arab Spring policies. Uh, Libya's Gaddafi, as bad as he was, said, don't kill me because you're going to have on your hands what we have in Somalia. You'll have warlords running Libya, and look what happened. Now we have a flood of refugees running out of Africa because of what Hillary Clinton did it with her Arab Spring. And, and as a result of it, we are going to get, what, 10,000, 300,000 Syrians? This is crazy. Uh, much more than 10,000. They're looking to spring tremendous numbers beyond anything that you can imagine. Look at Germany oh rioting in the streets of Germany right now. Women are being raped. They had 200 rapes they reported on New yep. Year's Eve, and right. everybody's going crazy over there. The, the German people now are starting to say, what's going on to this? Starting to riot in the streets. What the woman has done is incredible. So yeah, Merkel, is, Merkel has invaded her own country. No, it's crazy. It's upside down liberalism, Donald. It's absolutely true. Now, you're very popular with women, despite the fact that Hillary thinks she's the candidate for women. Isn't that true by every poll? Yeah, the poll that just came out today actually has to be higher with women than with men, which is great, because that's the first time that's happened. But you know what? I, I have more respect for women than Hillary Clinton does, and I'm going to take <laughs> women. I'm going to I'm going to protect women and men because number one, it starts at the border. It starts with the military. It starts with protecting, and we don't have the people that know how to do it. We have people that aren't going to protect anybody. They're not strong people, and Hillary is a Hillary doesn't have the strength or the stamina to be president. Let me tell you, Michael, she doesn't have the strength. You know, she'll go to an event. And then you don't see her for a week, and then she goes to another one. And everybody that's interviewed or everybody that she sees, it's all vetted. It's like these people that ask, what did you have for breakfast this morning, Mrs. Clinton? Uh, it, the whole thing is ridiculous. And your stamina is pretty amazing. I asked you about it three months ago. Do you think you're in it for the long haul? Where do you get the stamina from? And you said right on the Savage Nation, I guess it's my genes. I personally think that it was the air from Alley Pond Park, but... Donald, before you go, and I don't want to take up more of your valuable time, which you can use for uh, seeing bigger crowds in a way all around the country, the capture of uh, Mexico's number one drug lord is a big deal for you. He threatened you and your family, didn't he? Well, he did, but I guess, look, he's right now got other difficulties. He did at the time, and I was very much in favor of, you know, you better go get him. But uh, that's okay. I mean, that's a lot of people threaten me. I get threatened. Um, I'm right now. You know, it's very interesting. I'm going over. I'm doing the Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon tonight, who's a good guy. He's been always very nice to me. I'm going over to do his show, and one of the questions they want to ask about is uh, El Chapo. So we'll talk about El Chapo a little bit. But mm -hmm. like they well, have. Uh, my Donald, truthfully, my suggestion is don't even talk about it, because you know, tr I mean, it's one man to the other. It's a national show you're on now with millions of listeners. There's nothing to be gained in poking that uh, that situation. And they're just trying to bait you. You know, they're very dangerous, the mainstream media. All they want to do is get the, the guest in a either gotcha moment or make your life more miserable than, than you could ever imagine. And you don't need my advice. But trust me on this one. <laughs> I would stay, stay away from that situation entirely, which now brings us around to the last question, which is the issue of security per se. You are surrounded right now by a phalanx of bodyguards, aren't you? Well, actually, Secret Service, you know, if you're number one, you get Secret Service. And 
I have to tell you, they're tremendous people, and they're really dedicated people. They're great. And, you know, you read all different things, and I'm just telling you, I know people. That's what I do for a living, right? It's people. It's not deals. It's yeah. people. And right. they're fantastic men and women, and I have a lot of them. And I, I will say that they have...